Do you know? I think my copy of the County of London Plan of 1943 might be one of the best investments I ever made. This thing is absolutely full of odd information about the weird version of London that we never got. Recently I talked about the general plan to mess around with the major stations in central London, which would have involved a huge amount of construction, no small amount of destruction, and generally would have been impractical and expensive and a massive hassle all around. Today I'd like to talk about a scheme that probably would have been slightly more doable, but no less bonkers for all that. You see, in 1943, the suggestion was mooted that all the major stations should be rebuilt for use by aircraft. This might seem a little nutty. After all, in 1943, commercially available helicopters had only just come on the market. The report was published in 1946, but even so, helicopters were still a very new concept, at least as a practical proposal. It's a little bit like saying that we should consider putting Hyperloop interchanges in today. No, wait, less ridiculous than that. Some 20 years later, the Harrier jump jet would offer false hope for the possibility of a vertical takeoff passenger jet. In the 1950s, the Fairy Rotodyne, a curious aircraft that was a hybrid of aeroplane and helicopter with jet powered rotors, seemed like another strong possibility to revolutionise city to city transport. But again, it was a dead end. I feel kind of ripped off that we got the future where AI steals our jobs, but we don't have rocket copters. However, despite the lack of available technology in 1943, the plan does, helpfully, quote their reasoning. They state that, All the portents indicate that after the war there will be a very considerable expansion in air transport for passengers and, perhaps, for freight. And let's be honest, Ultimately, they weren't wrong about that. Edwin Starr may have believed that war was good for absolutely nothing, but any engineer will tell you that it's often a driver of technological advancement. Air power was used in the Second World War on a level never previously seen, and the developments in aircraft for the world's air forces would trickle down to civilian life. Airports were sighted very inconveniently. London's main airport at the time was Croydon, which was out in the suburbs and quite a distance from the nearest station. Heathrow Airport had only just opened in 1946 and wouldn't get a rail connection until the Piccadilly Line arrived in 1977. Many experts at the time believed that the way forward was to build an airport in central London. Sites suggested included Hyde Park and King's Cross. More sensible people pointed out that this was frankly insane given the space required and the noise generated. As a compromise, the report proposes what they call taxi planes, which would fly from central London to the main airports. These small planes would land at the major stations, either in areas converted from disused sidings or on the roof. It should be noted that the plan imagines that most of the major stations in London would either be demolished or rebuilt to improve their integration with road traffic. The plan envisaged knocking down Blackfriars, Cannon Street, Liverpool Street, Waterloo, Broad Street, St Pancras, Fenchurch Street and Charing Cross, which leaves Paddington, Marlebon, Euston, King's Cross, Hoban Viaduct and Victoria as the major termini. I think the problem here is that the authors were flying by the seat of their pants, so to speak. Railways employed very well-established technologies, but civilian aircraft were still developing. Would helicopters be the next big thing, or would they remain a novelty? The report doesn't even specify helicopters. They just talk about aircraft capable of vertical takeoff and landing. I'm just assuming they're talking about helicopters, but for all I know, they could be talking about hot air balloons. But it's not all hot air. The report is correct in its assumption that the goods facilities attached to stations would become redundant in the coming decades, and all that space would become available potentially to be turned into a mini aerodrome. The reason these goods facilities fell out of use is not because air freight became a dominant means of transportation, but due to changes in the way freight was carried by rail. The individual wagon loads that once characterised rail freight started going by road instead, with railways mostly being used for bulk cargoes, where there was still an economic advantage. The little goods yards attached to stations were replaced with huge marshalling yards and cargo terminals. In fact, in 1969, St Pancras actually would see its goods yard used for aircraft. 
The Daily Mail sponsored a transatlantic air race from London to New York. The RAF sentry, a Harrier GR-1 piloted by squadron leader Tom Leckie Thompson, departed vertically from St Pancras. Unfortunately, they didn't clean up beforehand and everyone watching got a nice coating of coal dust. Leckie Thompson won, by the way. The concept of taxi aircraft would also see the light of day, albeit in a rather different form. In 1953, the Waterloo Air Terminal was opened, roughly where the London Eye is today. This was a facility where air passengers could check in before being taken on to Heathrow or Northolt airports. This transport was usually by coach, but for the lucky few there was a helicopter service operated by Westland Whirlwinds. This lasted three years and, to be honest, was not a very efficient way of doing things. There are strict restrictions on the airspace over London, so the route was quite indirect, flying over the Thames for most of the way. In 1957, the terminal was closed and replaced with a new building in West London, roughly where the Kensington Sainsbury's is now. The idea of turning stations into mini-airports didn't get much further than a few paragraphs in the report, although in the 1960s the concept was again floated for Victoria. At around the same time, British Rail were considering turning Marlebone into a coach station, so I don't think they had much faith in their ability to provide a good train service. If only modern franchisees had that level of self-awareness. With the benefit of hindsight, we can see that the County of London planners had it all mixed up. Rather than aircraft transporting people into the city, new rail links and services would be built that transported people out of centre. What this shows, though, is how far ahead the planners were thinking. Yes, what they were proposing was radical and even naive, but these weren't people looking at short-term, easy solutions. They were planning an entirely new city, almost from the ground up. It's a little unfair to highlight this one aspect of the report, I suppose, because it's only a small part of a much larger plan. So, um, sorry about that, I guess. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, I would be pleased if you'd click the like button and subscribe for more. I would like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon and here on YouTube. You are the jet engines to my rotors. And I will see you all again very soon. Cheerio.